Hi hey guys, um, welcome to the very first episode of my podcast. Um, my name is uh, Jerry Berger. Um, we don't have a name for it as yet, but I'm sure that we'll think of one as we move along into episode two, three, and four, and so on. Now, what I'd like to do today is introduce you to my very first guest, and this person is extremely special because at the age of 12, she had a crazy ass dream to become a computer scientist. At the age of 17, this girl would become the youngest systems engineer in the history of finance and banking to lead a major technology change for a large global financial institution. In her early 20s, she decided to leave computer science and became a professional writer. A few years later, she was named by Financial Post magazine as one of the top five entrepreneurs in the nation. She wasn't yet 30. System design, project management, strategic business development, executive leadership, writing, speaking, teaching, international management consulting, multiple industry awards and allocates, elected terms as president of international industry and professional associations allowed her to use her unique genius to make any crazy ass dream she had come true. Please welcome Linda Lopek. Hello, Linda, how are you? I'm fine, Jerry. Thank you for having me as your first guest. I'm so honored. Well, it's, a, it's an absolute privilege and, uh, and a pleasure. Now, you know, what I've just outlined about Linda is by no means the end of all of her many, many achievements over the years uh, she's been in business. So if you really want to find out a bit more, as we'll say at the end of this conversation, um, go to Linda's website and read her full bio. And uh, it would be um, something uh, that would be absolutely worthwhile looking into. Linda, you know, looking at your full business career, you would have had many mentors uh, along the way. And, you know, perhaps you could just uh, outline maybe one or two members that had uh, an effect on some of your successes during that time. I've been very, very fortunate, Jerry. I've had the most wonderful mentors all the way from 1967 to date. All of them were men and they helped me so much because they they saw something in me they gave me opportunities to do things that others would not have had the, the courage to trust and because of them i learned really fast and i got to do things that otherwise i wouldn't have been able to do but uh, this year, I lost my, mo my mentor that's been with me for many, many years. On uh, Wednesday, March the 14th, uh, it was a very hard day for me. I woke up to the news that Stephen Hawking, the man who had helped me so much over the years and whose example had given me the courage and hope I needed to keep going through one of the darkest periods of my life, had died. And I wasn't expecting it. I was so bereft that day that I could barely function. And for several days afterward, I really struggled to pull myself together because I felt his loss so deeply. His death actually turned out to be much harder on me than the loss of my own parents many years ago. And, and even talking and thinking about it now, which is six months later, it's still quite painful and emotional for me. I really, really miss him. Okay. You know, that, that's part of any business journey. You know, you have some losses and uh, some wins in any business journey. And I understand that Stephen Hawking had some parallel issues. When we think of Stephen Hawking, he had motor neuron uh, disease and uh, that affected his career. But Obviously, you had some parallels uh, in your own career as well. Perhaps you could just tell us a little bit about that. Well, I came to rely on him as my primary source of mental strength. And I probably never relied on him more than when I survived catastrophic brain and spinal cord injuries after being internally decapitated and nearly burned alive in this terrible accident that 
was caused by an impaired driver back in October of 2009. That accident, not surprisingly, completely changed the trajectory of my life in a fraction of a second uh, that it took that young man to cross the highway center line, drive up the hood of my car, and come straight through the windshield. The one thing that kept me focused on moving forward, despite everything I was facing, was Stephen's living reminder that however difficult life may seem, there is always something you can do and succeed at. And all the way through dealing with my injuries and the challenges I faced because of them, his words became my personal mantra and I hung on to those words for life. I know I would not have made it through this experience if I didn't believe in those words 110%. Both Stephen and another one of my mentors, the film critic Roger Ebert, they had both continued to lead very productive lives despite their own debilitating physical and medical challenges. That is what gave me hope for my future as well. Uh, regardless of what I was facing. And of course, in the early days, you, you don't even know the full extent of what you're going to be facing. And now, nine long, hard years later, I'm still here and both my mentors are gone. So in many ways, I realize I'll never be the same as I once was. Uh, and he taught me that it didn't really matter because in the most important ways, I've never been more of who I am at the core than I am today. And, you know, like everybody else on the planet, I'm just here doing the best I can each day. And that's all we can expect of ourselves or anyone. Well, Linda, that's uh, an amazing, an amazing story. Um, I don't believe that, you know, many individuals on the planet would go through, you know, a catastrophic experience like that and try and recover i mean it must have been extremely hard i mean looking at you know the the 40 odd years that you've been in business already how how did you keep that business going it's um, I'd, I'd be really curious to know oh uh, don't well i would say it's a combination of my deep love for business and in particular my commitment to the work i was doing in smart start with my community members and of course i had the support of my mentors as well plus i'm one of those really stubborn people and when i make up my mind to go and do something uh, that that is what keeps me going because i i just won't quit until i get there but i didn't get anywhere in my career or even through this experience by myself like I said, I had the benefit of working with great mentors since 1967, and I started my first business back then. It was an agency. But to get to where I am now post-injury, I've had to spend many years and a crap ton of money in different 18 different rehabs I've done, submitting to some very painful work. I was very fortunate to have the help of amazing medical people, doctors, other professionals, and they supported my goal, which was to attempt to rewire my brain so that I might have a chance to return to my work. That's what I wanted the most, and I was fighting for that from day one of realizing my predicament. So um, how I started out there, sending prayers of gratitude to God every single day. I asked him to help me survive the pain I was dealing with and to make it possible for me to recover enough brain function just to be able to return to some form of my work and live independently again. Those two things were really important to me. Physically and mentally, I was prepared to do the work required, but realistically, I knew I'd need a lot more than that. And basically, I needed a miracle. So that's what I asked for. And in exchange for it, I promised God I would accept all of the challenges experiences and remaining permanent impairments as the gifts I knew they were without complaining about it. Uh, although I never would have asked for these things myself because practically speaking they all suck big time. 
But I've always known my entire life that the worse something seems or feels at the time, the greater the gifts hidden inside the experience for you to discover. I have to tell you, Jerry, the gifts that I've been given as a direct result of this are not only phenomenal beyond all imagination, I know that they could not have been experienced in any other way. And I'm so truly blessed. Uh, it's actually a little bit embarrassing. When we started out, uh, we didn't know if it was possible to achieve my recovery goals. They really seemed, under the circumstances, quite uh, unrealistic. I was almost completely incapacitated physically. Uh, and of course, you know, Stephen was in the same situation, just for a different reason. I was severely cognitively impaired, with maybe 10%, maybe even less of that brain function at the start. And also, among the many other injuries I'd sustained in the accident, I had suffered a deep brainstem injury and it wasn't operable. The brainstem is a very important important part of the brain because it controls the flow of messages between your brain and the rest of your body and essentially every body function such as breathing swallowing heart rate blood pressure consciousness whether you're awake or sleepy uh, that's all part of the brain stems function and uh, mine ha has not worked properly since the accident so lots of challenges there and it wasn't just that I couldn't access anything that I knew or that I couldn't talk and I couldn't comprehend or remember anything. Every life-sustaining bodily function was also compromised. So it's been quite an adventure for sure. But the doctors assured me I hadn't lost what I knew. I just couldn't access it. And Stephen had a similar situation. His, his brain worked great, but of course he couldn't speak and uh, he had uh, a lot of physical challenges as well. Uh, to, because I had lost access to my brain's function and abilities that I had prior to the accident, and because I make my living renting timeshare access to that brain to help people solve their business problems, this was a really big deal to me and I had a lot at stake. But one of the reasons to, to get back to your question about my business interests, one of the reasons I was able to focus all of my time and attention on re-engineering my brain was I had originally set up my business to be able to run without me, uh, except for my personal service work, of course, and that's what I really needed my brain function for. Immediately after the accident, the contingency plans, the automated processes, and the disaster recovery procedures that I put in place meant the business kept on going and it continued to generate revenue without me not at the same level, of course, as when I was fully functional, but enough to keep it going and alive for five years, at which point I was finally able to get back to it again part time. That's uh, so amazing, um, Linda, you know, that you've gone through all of this uh, catastrophic experience and you had the foresight to be able to set up systems and processes that even though experience, um, you could keep that keep the business alive, keep it going. And yeah, that's just amazing to me. So you, sit, you could just set things up so anybody could step in. You just explain how that would work. Well, if you think about it, in, in the world of online business, everybody talks about having the freedom lifestyle and all of that. And part of being a responsible business owner is making sure that your business can run without you. So every system had been designed uh, for that purpose because my ultimate exit strategy for the business was that I was going to leave it behind and just let it run and generate income for me. Yeah. And that's how I built it originally. And that's what many people are trying to do now, except that most of them are not going about it in a, a very practical or efficient way. 
And so that's what I had been teaching my Smart Start members, the people, the business owners in that community. They learn how to set up a business like this. They learn how to make it truly an independent business that doesn't require them to be at the helm constantly. And um, so I already had all the documentation and procedures in place. Everything was set up as streamlined and as simple as possible. And uh, it's really not a complicated business. I know that a lot of people who are involved in funnels now think it's a nightmare and a spaghetti's breakfast out there. And it is the way some people are building them, but it doesn't have to be that way. I had uh, consciously set up things so a stranger could come in and know what meetings were booked and how to reach those clients to advise them of my absence and all that. All of the other business functions pretty much took care of themselves because most of them were automated. The accident happened on a Monday. I don't work with clients on Monday or Friday, but I was fully allocated for the rest of the year on all of my, my client days. So uh, that's what happened. A stranger did come in, uh, implemented the procedure that was part of the disaster recovery and contingency plan should something happen to me and I not, not be available. And they called everybody and made all of the necessary arrangements with them and they explained why I wouldn't be available and why. And so I was really glad that I had made that investment. I teach all of my clients the importance of doing that and um, I think it's 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 part of your responsibility as a business owner to make sure that things will carry on and when you have team members and employees who are working in your business too it becomes even more important and I know that people talk about wanting to do this as part of their whole freedom lifestyle strategy but in reality, when you're running your own business and you have people working with you, you are responsible not just for you and the business, but also for those people and their families. And so you have to do things like this to make sure that these protections are in place. Nobody knows uh, when they leave the house that someone's gonna drive through their windshield and, and leave them catastrophically impaired. And it that would, was my whole life's work that that was sitting there on that computer. So I did uh, not want to lose that. And I think if I had lost it, I'm not so sure I would have been able to uh, recover because I would be just completely, completely devastated by my circumstances. And uh, you know, those first five years were really tough. The, the business kept on going. The clients were all very understanding, of course. And most of my smart starters, they stayed the course and they just kept right on doing their work and uh, taking out the courses from the library and the digital business leadership school. They, they had worked with me long enough to know how I thought about things. And I guess now they were living this real life example of why everything I'd been telling them all this time was really important. And uh, many of them are still with me, not because I'm a crap teacher and advisor, but because as their success grows, they face new challenges with which they need my help to prepare. And throughout my injury recovery, these clients reminded me that we still had important work to do together and that kept me going too. Absolutely. God, it's an inspirational story and it's a testament to uh, the belief that your customers had in you, you know, despite the circumstances. Well, I also have to tell you, Jerry, you know, just to be honest here, there were many times when I did not think I could carry on another minute. And in those times, I would review the faces and the stories of the thousands of clients whose dreams I had helped facilitate and bring to life prior to the accident because I'd been doing this work for 50 years now and that kept me in touch with why I was putting myself through so much and I could not stop until I had achieved my recovery goals or proven to myself that it was not possible. Now I did have a long list of recovery goals. Some of them it will never be possible to overcome the damage because it's permanent and I have to, you know, deal with my workarounds and stuff now. But my two biggest goals were 
to recover, to re-engineer my brain sufficiently to return to my work in some form or another, and also to return to independent living. Uh, and both of those goals have been achieved. But for a while there, on the really bad days, I would allow myself a 15 minute meltdown and a pity party, and then I'd get back at it, taking just one step, however small, forward. I'm not gonna lie to you, Jerry, sometimes it took me three days to get that one step done, and another three days to recover from the effort of it. But that persistence has paid off, and God answered my prayers with a miracle. I can talk reasonably well now, although I only relearned English and let my other four languages go. I can walk, not that well, but I get around. But most importantly, I'm back to work. I'm living independently again. I have had to change how I'm delivering my remaining legacy commitments for Smart Start, but it's all good. And the clients I'm working with now are doing the most incredible things. And I'm over the moon with joy to be helping them build their eight-figure businesses. Wow, that's uh, another, wow, another awesome, another high five, Linda. That's uh, absolutely incredible. And uh, working with eight-figure business owners um, is uh, obviously a real pleasure, you know, for you. I know uh, one of the... Um, the, uh, the people that uh, we're working with um, at the moment. Um, her name is uh, Janet Clark, and uh, I met you again um, through Janet. Uh, I remember about eight, nine years ago, I read an ar article of yours, and uh, I kept that article for a long time because it outlined the principles of uh, business success. That was uh, something close to my heart, and through Janet, I discovered that you were working with Janet as well, and I, I just couldn't believe my luck when, oh. when, when you appeared. <laughs> Isn't that interesting how paths cross and you don't expect it, you have no idea that the work you put out there years ago is going to have an impact on someone and that later they will cross your path. I just think that's so fascinating. And you know, that's why I always say to my clients too, you cannot put crap work out there. You can't be mediocre. It's a disrespect to yourself, never mind your clients. So you have to put your best work out there all the time. And that's that's one of our tenets and standards of performance in Smart Start. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I couldn't agree more. So um, I'm just curious, how did you meet Janet? I met Janet through the Coaching Jungle, which is a group uh, that's owned by Mark Mawinney. And that was in the summer of 2017, so just a year ago. I really liked how she presented herself online, and I enjoyed her posts in the jungle very much. At that time, we were reviewing potential businesses who wanted to work with us in Smart Start, and I only had one open client spot available. I kept hearing this voice telling me Janet should be the one I helped next. Meanwhile, we're having boardroom meeting after boardroom meeting, listening to pitches and reviewing proposals and this and that, and this voice would not shut up. It said, Janet's the person you need to help next and this went on for days and days it was very insistent um, and then this day came along in the coaching jungle and i saw janet had posted she was looking for help to build this amazing business dream that she had for the freedom shift which is her company so i reached out on facebook and i said that i could probably help her if she was interested and the rest is history so if you've been following Janet's work at all, and I know you're deeply involved with her in her High Ticket Sales Alliance, you know how many amazing things she's accomplished in just one year. And I'm so proud of what she and her team have done. <clears throat> yes, it's, uh, you know, I was on a similar journey, you know, looking for a specific mentor that aligned with my values and, you know, what they were doing. And I had many uh, discovery calls with potential coaches, but uh, oh. Janet, yeah, Janet kept uh, popping up again. Uh -huh. and, um, I talked about the potential uh, of working with Janet with my wife Jenny, and mm -hmm. because she's a you know a partner in 
whatever business endeavor we uh, get involved with. Mm -hmm. And we looked at her material, uh, okay. what she promised as a coach, uh, looked at mm -hmm. her, her history. And um, sometimes it's not uh, what they say, it's what you feel. Um, mm -hmm. And from a heartfelt uh, connection, um, mm -hmm. I decided to invest. And uh, I'm so glad that I did. I'm so glad that you did too, because we love having you in the Alliance. And there is so much exciting work coming out from there that's on the books for the coming year. I can't spill the beans on all that because we're still in development and a lot of the stages, but it has been so much fun helping Janet build her dream. So much fun. And when I think of how, what a good time I'm having working with her and helping her make these things happen, I completely forget about all the crap that I went through the last nine years to get to this point so I could be available to work with her. Yeah, you know, so uh, anybody listening to this uh, podcast, uh, I totally recommend that you, you know, look up Janet Clark and uh, her sales alliance because, you know, the, what we've talked about over the past uh, 10, 15 minutes has been absolutely inspirational. And um, the people behind Janet, the people she's working with, uh, absolutely uh, top-notch and I'm, I'm very privileged to work with within that team but uh, just moving on a little bit um, Linda you know what are you doing now and uh, why is it important you know particularly in your business uh, well uh, most of my time during the week is dedicated to helping Janet build her eight-figure dream she right. def her idea definitely has potential to go all the way uh, we started from nothing as many business owners do but uh, she's really got something good going here. It is a tremendous amount of work, of course, to build an eight-figure business. And there's a lot of things that you need to put in place and think about and, and lots of work to do. But it's all very exciting and, and we're having a great time with it. For myself, I have quite a few things underway in the Smart Start community. There's always a lot going on in there. We have a new weekly show called Business Genius. Uh, we've partnered up with Amazon. Alexa delivers Business Genius to Amazon's customers around the world. We launched that in March. It's going really, really well. In fact, a new episode is due tonight, so that's what I'll be doing after I finish with you. Right. Last year, I released our first new program since the accident, and that was called Discover Your Genius. Uh, I dedicated it to the very first uh, entrepreneur who benefited from Smart Start programs. He, um, he had been instrumental to helping me through the journey uh, of injury recovery as well. But unfortunately, he passed away before we could celebrate his uh, big successes and mine. So that was another bit of a sadness thing. So I, I launched Discover Your Genius on his birthday. I dedicated it to him. Mm -hmm. And that Discover Your Genius program is one of the last projects I worked on with Dr. Hawking. The clients who've taken it, the online assessment that's part of Discover Your Genius are now using their unique genius to put incredible work out into the world. And that's really wonderful for me to see. Uh, I wish that Dr. Hawking was still here so that he could see some of this work as well. I'm totally in love with and proud of what they're doing as a result of the insights they gained from the Discover Your Genius assessment. I still teach digital business management and leadership. I run advisory services for digital executives, thought leaders, experts, and authors. I have many, many authors in my clients, uh, all working on amazing book projects. And I do one-on-one uh, -on -one client work too. I'm very selective about that. And at the moment, I'm quite focused on the freedom shift and uh, Janet's activity. I'm also writing my 105th book. It's called The Space Between Breaths. God only knows how long it's going to take me to finish it with all these other things on the go. But it's important to my children that I do. So finishing that book is on my list as well. And all of this work is important to me for different reasons. I'm convinced I'm still here by the grace of God when I really should not have survived that accident. So I can finish what I started and serve those I meant to serve as long as I'm able. Smart Start had some very audacious goals that I'm pursuing there and I'm uh, 
making some good progress there. I also believe that I have a responsibility to make the best use of my remaining time on the planet, especially having been the recipient of a miracle. And of course, you know, I'm getting older, as is obvious by my silver hair coming in, uh, which, by the way, I refer to as my wisdom highlights rather than just calling it gray hair. Right. <laughs> but, so that's my plan moving forward. I'm so grateful to have the opportunity to continue contributing to the U economy by sharing my experience and expertise and what I know for sure with those who want to build a standout business. That's, that's what I love uh, to do. <clears throat> Mm, that's absolutely uh, fantastic, Linda. Um, you just mentioned one thing, um, audacious goals. Could you just share one audacious goal that you set for yourself? Um, I, I started Smart Start in 2002. Yeah. And uh, the idea got hatched in this uh, ballroom at a swanky Los Angeles hotel. I was at a conference being hosted by Mark Victor Hansen, and we were... Uh, we were meeting in this ballroom to have a VIP lunch with um, a bunch of interesting people. And my 50th birthday was coming up, and we just had one of those sessions where he talked about the importance of setting big, hairy, audacious goals. And I was sitting there at lunch and had a drink or two, and I'm thinking, oh, what could I do that's like really far out? And my 50th birthday was coming up, so I stood up and I said, I'm going to donate $50 million to helping entrepreneurs uh, uh, achieve their crazy ass dreams. And, you know, nobody said a word. Everybody in there was a very big thinker, so they, they didn't think it was crazy, but it was a little bit crazy. I didn't know how I was going to do it. I just said, this is what I'm going to do. So after lunch, you know, I hopped on a plane from left LAX, came back to Toronto, uh, all the time on the plane, I thought, well, what could I do? What could I do? How can I come up with this $50 million that I want to donate? I didn't have $50 million sitting in the bank, obviously, but I knew I could create it somehow. And over the years, I came up with the idea of Smart Start, which we launched in 2002. And um, it, we took it online, I think, when did I go online? I think it was 2008. And 18 months later, uh, I had... Uh, deliver just over ten million dollars to wow. help other people build their businesses okay. and um, of course then the accident happened and everything kind of came to a bit of a halt there <clears throat> which was frustrating the only reason I, I did not really realize how big smart start had grown uh, and how much we had actually contributed and helped people with these adventures business adventures of theirs because I was just doing the work and having a great time. I, I wasn't that focused on the other things, but as a result of the accident, of course, um, the insurers put me through five different forensic audits to prove that I had a legitimate business and blah, 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 all these things they do. Uh, because they could, they could not believe that just one person could have done all this in a year and a half. Uh, so, uh, but they found out that I, in fact, actually had done that, and that's how I knew exactly how many people had been helped, uh, how many countries we were doing business in, and, and that I had crossed the $10 million mark already. So, I'm excited to finish it. Uh, I, I still have another uh, $39 million to deliver, <laughs> so wow. I, got, I got my work cut out ahead of me. But it's going great. I'm yeah. just going to keep on going till I die. Yeah. <clears throat> that's well, the plan. <laughs> I, I, I think that's uh, absolutely fantastic, um, Linda, because, you know, everybody needs a BHAG. And, uh, you know, even when you're talking to a person one-on-one, -on -one, you know, maybe in a, in a sales conversation, mm -hmm. you know, the only way that uh, you're going to achieve their dreams and goals is to outline a vision. Mm -hmm. and, and that vision has to be aspirational. Uh, to become motivational mm -hmm. and um, that's exactly what you've done mm -hmm. and uh, I'm, I'm absolutely sure that anybody listening to this will be absolutely inspired uh, by what you've achieved and uh, what you continue to achieve and what you plan for the future so uh, you know this conversation has been absolutely fantastic Linda uh, so thank you 
Well, thanks so much for your interest in my work and my life experiences. It's been really wonderful talking to you today and it's great working with you in the Alliance. I look forward to seeing your face on all the Zoom meetings and uh, listening to your experiences with the clients you're serving mm. on Janet's behalf. It's lots of fun. I it's, think we're going to do great things there. I really do. Yeah, me too. You know, I don't believe this is going to be our last um, conversation, Linda. I'm sure there are many, many stories that we could uh, delve into and um, come up with some golden moments and some gems uh, for your audience as well as mine. So thank you. Oh, that will be fun. It will be very, it will be a lot of fun. So uh, thank you very much, Linda. And uh, we'll, talk, we'll talk again soon. Okay.